Hey folks, I welcome you all to Scalar Academy's YouTube channel. And this is the first video in the SQL tutorial series. Now, before I start off with today's session, I'd request you folks to subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon so that you do not miss out on the notifications. So on that note, in this session, we'll start by understanding what exactly is SQL and then we will go ahead and create our first database and table. So before we do all of that, let's understand what is SQL. So simply put, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Well, that is just the extension of this term SQL, but what can you actually do with SQL? Well, with the help of SQL, you can communicate with databases. Okay, that's fine, but what is a database? Well, whenever you'd have to store data, and if you'd have to store that data in an organized form, you will need a database. So simply put, with the help of a database, you can store your data in an organized form. So let's understand the example of database and tables with a simple example. So I have got this T set with me. I hope you guys can see this properly. So in this T set, what you can consider is this entire thing to be your database. And in this entire thing, what you're doing is you are organizing your data in a proper structured way. So this entire set, you can consider to be a database and these cups which are present inside it, you can consider to be your tables. And if I have to simplify it, what I can say is, let's say if you are studying in a college, then your entire college or all of the information about your college would be stored in your database and in your college database you can have multiple tables so you can have one table for student information another table for the faculty information another table for the department information and this is how you store data in tables and those tables are properly organized in your database but there's a catch over here if you'd have to work with the data which is present in these tables or which is present in this database, then you'd need this language called as SQL because without the help of SQL, you cannot extract data from these tables. And this is where my friends, the knowledge of SQL comes in. So with the help of SQL, you can properly either maybe insert data into this table, extract data from this table, or even manipulate the tables which are present inside this. So, now that we understand what exactly is SQL, let's go ahead and create our first database and our first table using MySQL server. So, I've opened up MySQL Workbench over here. Now, before I go ahead and create the database, let's again understand what is MySQL and also what is MySQL Workbench. So MySQL is a database management system. So we know what exactly is a database. And again, to work with these databases, what I need is a database management system. And that is exactly what a DBMS means. And we have different types of DBMS. So we've got MySQL, we've got Microsoft SQL Server, we've got the Oracle SQL, and out of these, right now, the DBMS which we are using is MySQL. And if I do want to use the GUI tool of this, that is what is known as MySQL Workbench. So as you can read over here, MySQL Workbench is the official graphical user interface tool for MySQL. And now let me go ahead and open my local instance. So this is what you see over here, local instance, and I'd have to type in my password. So user by default would be root and then whatever password you had given, just go ahead and type in that. And I have opened up my window. So over here, let me go ahead and create my first database. So to create a database, this would be the syntax. Let me increase the size of it so that you can properly see it. So here I'll write down create a database. And after this, I would have to give in the name of this database. So this create database, what you see are the keywords. So create a database. This is the syntax which you would have to use. After this, just given 
the name of the database. Let's say I give in the name of this database as college. After this, let me just put in a semicolon and let me select all of this and this thunder symbol, which you see, just click on that. Now, when you click on that here, you would see that create database college and here you would see in response one row has been affected. This would basically mean that I have successfully created my database called as college. Now, after I've created this database, if I'd have to go ahead and create some tables in this database, I would have to use this database. So for this, I will write down use and then given the name of the database. So the name of the database is college. So I'll just write down use college. Again, I will hit on this symbol. Again, you will see that use college response zero rows has been affected. Again, this would basically mean that I have successfully selected this particular database. Now that I have selected the database, this is my opportunity to create a table inside this database. So inside this college database, I would want to create a table called as student. And to create the student table, this would be the syntax. So I shall write down create table. So by default, this is what you'd have to write, create table. And this is the syntax to create a table in your SQL Server table or SQL Server database. So I'd write down create table and then I'll go ahead and give in a name to this. So I'll just write down student. So this would be the name of my table. After this, I will give in these round braces. And inside these round braces, what I'd want to do is I will give in the column names and also the type of the column name. So first, well, if you're a student at a college, you will have a student ID. So for that student ID, I'll just represent that as S ID. And then I will give this a, a data type. So let's say the data type for this is int. Then going ahead, I would need the first name and the last name of this student. So here I'll just have S first name and the type of this would be variable character or var char. And over here, let me just give in. So let's say the first name, the maximum length of the first name could be 25 characters. Then after this, the student would also have a last name. And if the student has a last name, I would create a new column for this. And I shall call that column as, let me just write down last name over here. Again, I will give this a data type. So for this again, the data type would be varchar. Again, the length of this, I will set it to be equal to 25. So here 25 basically means that the length of the first name and the last name could be anywhere between zero to 25, but cannot exceed 25 characters. And now, so I've created columns for the student ID, student name, the student last name. I would also need another column for the student marks. So here, I'll write down S marks again. Let me put it to be integer. So this is also set over here. Now I have given over here four columns and also since everything is set, I will end this command with a semicolon. So what I've basically done over here is I've created a table called as student and the student column or the student table has four columns. So the four column as student ID and the data type of student ID is integer. Then we have first name, and this is a variable length character, which would basically mean you can give strings over here. And over here, again, I have last name, where again, you'll give a string, and then you have the marks where it is of integer type, and you end this entire thing with a semicolon. Now, let me select this entire thing, and let me hit on this. And here, if you look at this, you will see create table student zero rows affected. This again would mean that I was successfully able to create this table called as student. Now let me delete this entire thing. And if I would want to see the table, what is present in this table or what records are present in this table, I have a command called as select or I have the statement called as select. So here I shall write down select star from and I would have to give in the table name. So the table name is student. 
so select star from student would mean that i am selecting everything or all of the records and all of the columns which are present in the student table so let me select this let me hit over here and as you see i was successfully able to create this student table which had all of these columns so here i've got the sid which is the student id then i've got the first name the last name and s marks so folks this is how we can create a database and a table using sql so folks this would be the end of this video in the next video we'll see how to insert data items or records into a table now before i end the session again i request you folks if you find this session to be informative do not forget to hit the like button and also to subscribe to our youtube channel so thank you and let's meet in the next one